Okay, welcome to our today's lesson, <laughs> whatever number we're at. It doesn't even matter. Um, today we're going to be talking about the subconscious mind and how to use intentions to basically start the process of creating and designing our own reality. It's kind of a cool idea. Uh, so a lot of this course has been talking about our subconscious mind and how to reprogram on a subtle level uh, how we perceive reality. And today we'll be exploring more about how we're interacting with reality. What are we? What can we do to continue this collaborative dance between us and reality? So before we do that, let's talk about this idea of life as being a chess game or a dance. So I like to see life or the universe or the environment, kind of anything that I view outside of my human body. And it's really beyond that. It's anything that I uh, can't see or don't know, uh, which is most of everything. Um, and I like to think of my engagement with the unknown as, as a conversation or a chess game that Many times in our modern society, we have this uh, almost like an obsession with making your reality happen and you do what you want to do and no matter what, don't stop, get to the end. And I feel like in a conversation, that's like somebody talking at you. It's like a lecture. And if you're in a conversation, it's not very nice to be lectured. It's not nice to just sit and listen to someone talk at you. And that's kind of this idea of if I'm going to control my reality or I believe that I have control over reality, for example, and I'm going to do what I want to do, it's it comes at the cost of not listening to the universe around you. It comes at the cost of not listening to the person around you. So the conversation is no longer a, a co-creation or a collaborative experience. Rather, it's an experience that I'm having to you. And that's kind of when we try to impose our will on our life. And vice versa, if we just kind of let life do us, um, it's it's the opposite setting. It's I just sit inside all day and I'm waiting for something to happen, which sometimes it might, but the the universe needs me to participate as well. The universe wants to work together with me. It wants to work with me. It's a dance. It's this beautiful dance. And if I'm pushing too hard or, or forcing too much, then I step on the feet of the universe. And if I try too little, then I the universe is trying to pick me up, but it can't because it needs me to walk to the mailbox to pick up the letter that was sent from the unknown, from the environment, from the external. So that's this idea that I have of playing with life. How do I co-create my life with, with life? And so from that sense, I like the idea of having preferences. I believe that we as a human have a preference for a reason. You know, in Buddhism, we talk about non-attachment, which we'll get into next episode. And non-attachment is this beautiful idea. And it's it's a beautiful idea that's often misunderstood. And we'll talk about the misunderstanding in the next episode. But what I really want to get into is that having a preference is not um, resisting the idea of non-attachment. That we can totally have a preference. We can definitely desire something and totally let go of it at the same time. So the idea is, is the universe has given you preferences so that when it gives you options, you can choose, and then it gives you more options, and you can choose, and it's this beautiful dance of back and forth. Okay, now have this, now try this. Because if nobody had preferences, we'd all just be wandering around choosing random things. And so the, our preferences almost allow us a more narrow uh, river to flow through as the universe gives us many options and different rivers. We have a more focused intention and that's what today's episode is about is using our preferences and using the equipment that we've been given our subconscious and conscious mind to basically program those preferences in so that we'll be able um, our senses will be able to pick up quicker opportunities that are aligned with what our passions and our joy and our uh, destiny are in our perspective so the universe wants us to fulfill our destiny in a way that's the most passionate because when we're the most passionate we're giving the most and which is helping the entire universe the universe wants us to be a part of it because the more we're giving ourselves and our heart and our passion and our joy the more we impact 
everything and everyone. And the more we can influence others to do the same thing. When I see someone in their joy, it makes me want to be in my joy. It doesn't make me want to do what they're doing. It makes me want to do what I love doing. And so the universe is trying to give you these opportunities to do what you love to do. But the first thing is you need to know what you love to do. And it's funny because sometimes we don't know what we love to do. And it's not about knowing the physical manifestation. Oh, I love doing body work. I love giving lectures or I love whatever. It's all you have to know is the feeling of love and just follow that around. And that'll bring you to different places. And you can observe those things and say, oh, I actually find a lot of joy and love when I'm doing this. And I find joy and love when I'm doing this because if I'm just following the joy, I realize, oh, in my joy, I'm alone most of the time. Or in my joy, I realize I'm with people quite often. Um, and that helps us narrow that in. So it's not that we have to know, it's that it's useful to know so that we can guide, we can help the universe guide us. We can use our filters to guide ourselves as well. Um, having said that, our joys always change. And it's not about getting attached to a certain idea. Oh, I love this profession. Or I love being with people today, so that means I love being with people tomorrow. That's not the case. It's always changing. So it's about being aware of this constantly evolving joy in however that manifests. It's a really interesting process. Anyway, so let's get into this idea. So I was at a restaurant a few years ago, and when I walked in, I, I tried to practice something. It's a really interesting exercise, and I, I heavily recommend and encourage you to try it as well. So walk into a restaurant or in any place, and I gave myself, my mind, the parameters. I want to see all of the love in the room. And all of a sudden, I look back, and I saw everybody was sitting together, and there were families together, and all the waiters were chatting and laughing with the cooks and the chefs. And everyone was just really, seemed like happy and connected. And then I said, okay, well, now I want to see all the separation in the room. So I gave my par that parameter, that program to my mind, and it kind of filtered through. And I saw that even though everyone was sitting together as families, most people were on their phones. And that even though people were sitting close to each other, nobody was actually touching. I realized, wow, there's a lot of separation here as well. And then I said, okay, I want to see the connection again. <laughs> And I saw that even though people were on their phones, they were talking to people they loved. They wanted to connect in a way that they knew how. And it was interesting because what I recognized in that experience was that in every moment, every piece of everything is available. I could have said, show me the joy. I could have said, show me the fear. And I could have found something in every single moment of life that everything is accessible. What allows us to see those things is the filter that we give to our mind. Now, most of the time, we're not giving a filter to our mind. Our mind has been programmed, pre-programmed, pre-given filters through ideas and schemas and beliefs and ideas and all these things. And I said ideas twice because that's important. <laughs> and the ideas we have and the beliefs that we have become the filter that we see life through. So instead of having this unconscious program, like, okay, I guess I'll just see the world the way I was told to, which is totally possible, but then you're just miserable all the time. Why not program the filter to start to heighten our ability to see certain things? It's almost like the universe is like a best friend trying to give you the food that you love. But if you don't tell the universe the food you love, it just keeps bringing you random foods. And sometimes it tastes really good and sometimes it doesn't taste so good, but the universe is like a good friend. They're like, just tell me what you like so we can get we can get more refined so I can send you the things that you love and less of the stuff that you don't like. So there are a few ways to do this and we'll talk about the idea of setting intentions. Um, there's two practices in the intention setting world that I'll give today that are really wonderful. One is very simple. It's every year I do on my birthday. And so I'm 30 years old now, so I did 30 for 30. So I list 30 things for my 30th birthday. Next year I'll do 31. Um, 30 things that I believe that, hmm, that I want to intend 
to start moving in the direction of this year. So it's not a list of goals. It's not about achievements. It's about directional movement. Like I want to move in this direction. And I feel that all 30 of these things are something that I could, that I could start moving toward within this year. It doesn't mean I have to, whatever I don't get to goes on the list for next year, or I delete if I see that it's not value uh, valid anymore. But the idea is starting processes, Get, like just putting something in the in the foreground, in the horizon for my mind to start looking towards. It's not about achieving it. It's about what's going to happen on the way. So for example, a few years ago, I really wanted to get some Vibram shoes, They're the five finger toe shoes. Awesome shoes, by the way. I'm not sponsored by them, but I really like them. Um, maybe they'll sponsor me. Um, I want to get these Vibram five finger shoes, but I didn't write on the list, buy five finger shoes. I wrote, start checking out the shoes, start asking around. And that year was just about talking to people about it. Hey, what did you find? Did you like them? Try on a few pairs. And by the end of the year, I actually ended up buying the shoes because I, I really liked them, but it wasn't about buying the shoes because in the process I might've found a million other things. I found, oh, if you like these, you might find another brand of shoes that you love. Oh, if you like this brand of shoes, you probably like running outdoors. Here's some really cool outdoor trails. You should check it out. And all of a sudden, I'm like on outdoor trails running, and I'm like, how did I even get here? And it was just setting my mind in the direction of something that I'm being pulled towards. So that's the idea. That's that's 29 for 29, or 30 for 30, or 40 for 40. And every year, you add more. And I often will go back during the year to look and it's actually quite amazing because it's almost like what we're doing is planting seeds in our subconscious mind. So when you plant a seed, you water it a little bit and then you forget it's there. Like it's, you, you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's doing its little thing in the ground and then all of a sudden you see this little sapling one day and you're like, whoa, I totally forgot I planted that five months ago or four months ago. And then it becomes this huge epic tree. And that's the idea is like we're planting these little intentions and then we're just... I always imagine I put an intention into an envelope and I put that envelope into bed and I like tuck it in <laughs> and or I mail it and it's gone and whatever happens happens. It's the letting go of the intention that actually allows it to organically arise in a way that um, is right for you instead of forcing instead of it becoming a lecture. It's like a hey universe this is what I'd like let's see if Let's see how it happens or where it happens or if it happens. And often it happens in a very, very different way than you imagine, which is why we had to let go of it because we want something to happen. And we're looking for that experience, right? We're, we're, we're um, setting the filter to what we think we want. And then we're missing that what we actually want is right on the side. So intentions are almost like widening that filter and saying, okay, these are some things that I want to catch in the filter and then follow. The more broad, the more easier, the more easily we catch these things and the more easily we can see what we actually want, the essence of what we want rather than the physical aspect of what we want. So on this list, sometimes I will list physical things like I want to maybe buy some shoes this year. I really want to buy some new clothing. Um, but I try to often write my intentions in a sense of things that I actually can't measure which, and that actually helps me not try to achieve it. So for example, one year I wrote, spend more quality time with the people I love. And that's it. It's just planting that seed in the backyard and, and not trying to get it to happen. Not now I'm like calling all my friends. No, I really just take a day to set these seeds and then live my life again and trust that the seeds were planted in the subconscious. And that's what these intentions do. We're very subtly altering our filter, which you can't really see. You just have to wait. And it might happen tomorrow. It might happen in a year. It might happen in six years. But when the flower is ready to bloom, it'll bloom. And the second practice we have with intention setting is a wonderful one. It's every two weeks in the full moon and the new moon. So the full moon is when we can see that birthing moon. And the idea is, is when the moon is full, it starts to move toward emptying. So that's what we do with our intentions as well. When we see the moon is full and moving toward empty, we want to say, what do I want to release in my life? What is holding me back? What do I want to let go of? And we can write a list of intentions for the next two weeks of what 
do are there any patterns are there any beliefs are there any things in my relationships are there any things in my work life and my family life that I it's time for me to let go of it doesn't mean by the end of two weeks you're going to let go of it it means that you're starting to work in that direction and that's the value of it is you're starting to create awareness around what wants to be let go of and that's very powerful when the new moon comes around, so the moon is empty, we can't see anything, then it moves toward becoming full again. And so we, on the new moon, write intentions of what do we want to do? What do we want to bring into our life that will create more fullness, more fulfillment, more love, more compassion, more whatever, more money, more success? Um, what are we inviting in versus what are we letting go of? And these are just examples of practices. The full moon and the new moon are wonderful um, markers because they happen every two weeks, which really keeps us tied to what we are wanting in our life so that we don't go five years and look back and say, where have I been? Rather, every two weeks, we're realigning with, okay, that thread that's pulling me through, what's changing? What isn't realistic anymore? What isn't aligned with me anymore? What still is and what am I not looking at? And that's why it's such a wonderful practice. It's every two weeks and it's something that we can see. When we connect our rituals or our routine to nature, then it becomes really powerful because nature is a clock for us. It's, it's a way for us to witness our, almost like the physical representation of what we're experiencing inside. What am I wanting to birth? And we're seeing the moon birth. And it's a really powerful process of um, mirroring our inner world and the outer world. And that's when we talk about, oh yeah, the in, inside's the same as outside. That's what we mean. That's, that's one of the ways that we can see that, is that my inner landscape can mirror the outer landscape. It's the same process that's happening even if it looks or feels different. So those are two ways that we can really start to program our subconscious mind. You can do it much more subtly as well, just when you walk out the house and you can give your mind different tasks. You can say, hey, show me all the red all the red on my walk to work today or on, the, on my walk to the wherever. Show me all the red. Show me all the color green. And you can start to see how this filter works and see how powerful it is. That when you just give your mind um, a program to filter, you start to notice a lot more. And that's what happens when it's like when you're pregnant, the whole world is pregnant. It's like when something's affecting you, you start to see that everywhere. But it was just as much everywhere as before you saw it. It's just that you're able to tune into that frequency. So this is about tuning into different frequencies. You can do it on a more um, physical level of seeing colors or seeing shapes or seeing types of people or seeing, or you can look a little bit deeper on a more energetic level of seeing, uh, see, let me see all the joy today. I wanna witness all the joy. I wanna witness all the fear and just see how powerful it is that we really do in a way have a choice of what we see. That we have an influence. It's not that we have control necessarily, but we can influence our side of the dance. And if we work together with life, oh, it is a wonderful co-creative process. And I heavily, heavily, heavily recommend. So today was about joining in with the universe to co-create our lives, using the tools we have of filters and intentions to start to change how we receive reality and our input into reality. We talked about the value of following our joy or following our love and just seeing where that takes us. It's not needing to know what I wanna be when I grow up. That changes all the time. It's about saying, what do I love right now? What brings me joy and love right now? You can make a list. What are, who are the people that bring me joy and love? What are the things that I do that I recognize? Ah, oh, wow, I lose sense of time. I love doing that. I'm so excited to do that. What are my fuck yes things? What are my fuck yes people? my places, the natural world that calls me the most. Do I love beaches? Do I love going and seeing the water? Do I love lakes? Do I love rivers? Do I love the desert, the mountains, the forest? Start to come up with a list of where am I, where am I seeing that I'm being drawn to, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. What's pulling me toward it? Thank you guys for listening. This will be the end of our lesson today. <laughs> I uh, will do two deep breaths and then three ohms. Deep inhale. Ah. Ah. 
Inhale and we om. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for being. Hari Om Tat Tat.